appreciate being here to share with you how we deal with difficult sites on Canandaigua Lake. Um, Bill had asked me a few weeks ago about this to send him some information. I mentioned to him that we have, or that I have a PowerPoint presentation on dealing with difficult sites. And what I'm gonna be showing you here now, you've heard a lot of background data, the specifics, the chemistry, and so on with regards to removing phosphorus or nutrients in general with regards to on-site wastewater treatment systems. What I'm gonna be showing you here is the kind of the practical approach, how we take some of these alternative enhanced treatment type uh, technology that you have seen here earlier this morning and how we apply it to some of these small difficult sites on shoreline properties. First of all, to give some of you an idea of where Canandaigua Lake is located with regards to Chautauqua Lake, in this aerial photograph here, this is an area showing the Finger Lakes region in central New York. This is Canandaigua Lake here, city of Rochester, so we're located about 30, 35 miles southeast of Rochester, New York, city of Syracuse over here. We're about 60, 65 miles west of Syracuse, Sotus Bay, around the Coit Bay. The Finger Lakes, this is Atisco Lake, Skinny Atlas Lake, Owasco Lake, Cayuga Lake, spelled C-A-Y, Seneca Lake, Cuca Lake, shaped as the Y, that's K-E-U-K-A, Canandaigua Lake, Honeyoy Lake, Canadice, Hemlock Lakes, and Canisius Lake. Those are the lakes that comprise the, the Finger Lakes region. Where is that located with regards to Chautauqua Lake? Here's Chautauqua Lake down here in the southwest corner of New York State. We are presently right here. Here's Canandaigua Lake up here in central New York. So this gives you an idea of where we're located with regards to your region down here. Now Canandaigua Lake is uh, 174 square miles watershed that drains into it it encompasses a number of municipalities in two counties. This is the area that it's my jurisdiction as a Canandaigua Lake Watershed Inspector that I'm responsible for. Some facts about Canandaigua Lake. Drainage area, as I said earlier, 174 square miles. Surface area of the lake, 16.7 square miles. Watershed includes parts of Ontario County, Yates County, Steuben County, small sliver in Livingston County. These are the towns that comprise that area that drain into the lake. Dimensions of the lake, 15 and a half miles long, approximately one and a half miles wide on the average. Maximum depth is 276 feet deep. Um, some other facts and figures on the lake volume. Note this elevation right here, 688 feet above sea level. And we have control gates on the, the lake to control the lake level to keep it within about 688, 688.5. Hold that thought as we come, go through on some of these uh, other systems. Land use of the shoreline, as you can see, residential is 29.8 miles. 83% of the shoreline is residential. Forest land is about 44%, believe it or not. You can see some of the forest land here. Others is 1.4 miles, 5% use. Land use in the watershed, cropland, we have about 4,000 acres of uh, agricultural land, forest land. This is a biggie right here, lake water uses. As a New York State DEC AA rated as a drinking water source, it per is permitted withdrawal of 18.2 million gallons per day, provides drinking water for over 65,000 people in five different municipalities. Those municipalities include the city of Canandaigua, the villages of Newark and Palmyra and Rushville, and the town of Gorham. Now, on-site wastewater treatment conventional and alternative. You've heard a lot of things here today about it. What we know is soils are used to treat the wastewater, not disposal. I do not refer to an on-site wastewater system or septic system as a disposal system. You hear that a lot. They are on-site wastewater treatment system. The system size and design is based on soils and system use. 
Proper care and maintenance is key for long-term effective use of these systems, regular septic tank pumping and water conservation. If you want to talk about a disposal system, there's a disposal system. That was taken care of, by the way. Now, a properly designed system, on-site system, properly sited, and when I say properly sited, located properly on the property, properly constructed and installed, and properly maintained, poses no undue health stress on the environment. But all that criteria needs to be met, all four of them. Properly designed, properly constructed, and properly maintained. And if you maintain it properly, it's not going to fail on you at the most inopportune time, such as your long four-day, Fourth of July weekend, Memorial Day weekend, Labor Day weekend, when you got all the family down, the office party when you got all your employees down, or you're trying to impress your uh, clients with your residents on the lake, or. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh, folks. These things do happen. Now, design. Again, must meet state health department requirements. What do we have for the state health department requirements? We have Appendix 75A, and now the most recent publication, the 2012 Design Handbook. Those are the state regulations that are in place now. Got that backwards. These are the regulations that are in place now for conventional systems. Must size the pretreatment tank properly, pretreatment tank, whether it's a septic tank, aerobic treatment unit, microbial inoculator generator, they must be sized properly. Must have appropriate soil type on the lot. You must have a proper area. And this is where you get into the difficult sites, just coming up with the proper area and proper depth to the water table. Groundwater, in the case of shoreline properties, you've got the lake levels to be concerned about. Other things that are in Appendix 75A are your lateral dimensions. You've got to be so many feet away from the house, 10 feet for the tank, 20 feet for the leach field, I believe it's 10 feet to a property line, and so on. 100 feet from a body of water. Keep that in mind. Your leach system is supposed to be 100 feet from a body of water, 100 feet from a well water supply. Again, not only your well, it's supposed to be 100 feet away from your neighbor's well to prevent your system from contaminating your neighbor's well. So these are the distances that need to be kept, especially the well water supply. But if you're into recharging your well with 40 proof pigeon poop, uh, you don't need to worry about the septic system. I couldn't believe this when I saw this. Downspouts, the bird sitting on the roof. Downspout came down, cracked the well cap. I couldn't believe it when I saw this. And okay, we don't want the landscaper mowing the lawn to knock it out, so we put a guard post up there to keep that from happening. It's amazing the things you see out there, folks, let me tell you. Okay. Again, New York State, you need four feet of usable soil for a conventional system. You need a percolation rate of one to 60 minutes per inch. You need proper slope. You need adequate area. Now, what problems do you get with septic systems? Of course, public health problems, <laughs> pathogens, nitrogen. Dysentery, Giardias. This long term, it basically what it is, is blue baby syndrome if you have too much nitrogen in your water supply. It impedes the cellular growth of infants. Other septic problems, it creates economic problems. It promotes lake aging, which you people are experiencing. It decreases property values. It can decrease recreation values. Also, it increases your public health costs. Now. What if the site doesn't meet Appendix 75A? Well, areas without local regulations for replacement systems, do the best that you can. Our policy in the Canandaigua Lake watershed is, even though Appendix 75A, according to state health departments, for new construction only, our policy is, if it's good for new construction, then it's good for replacement systems too. Only we had to add the phrase, as best as possible. 
because we all know there are existing lots out there prior to Appendix 75A that you can't meet those requirements, but we do the best that we can. Recommendation for severe sites, homeowner retain a design professional. Why? Protects the homeowner, protects the town, municipality, code enforcement officer from liability, maybe not all, but we do require licensed design professionals. Now, Part 75A does allow certain alternatives to the conventional treatment systems, and you've seen some of that technology here. What are difficult sites? Our definition of a difficult site is any site that doesn't meet the criteria for a conventional system. You don't have enough soil. You don't have enough area for the system. The slopes are steep, and so on. What are alternative systems? Any alternative system in our definition is anything that's not a conventional septic tank leach field system in the existing soil. You end up going to an alternative system. Some of the uh, manufactured products you've seen here, and I'm going to show you the use of some of these here shortly. Those are the types of alternative systems that you have to get into. We started out with the aerobic treatment unit system back in the mid 80s. On some of these difficult sites, we require, in fact, the aerobic units came in the beginning with a two-year, three-year maintenance agreement on them. When we started putting the aerobic units in, we said, uh-uh, that's not good enough, three years. Canandaigua Lake is a drinking water source for over 65,000 people. If we're going to allow these to go in, then the homeowner's going to have a maintenance agreement, and when it expires, get it renewed, but he's going to have a maintenance agreement on that unit for as long as the unit is in use, period. And that's what we enforce. Now, what do these units do? These units, when we first started putting them in, in the mid 80s, were tested by the National Sanitation Foundation. Those that met the class one classification have a 98% efficiency rating in removing your disease causing pathogens and bacteria. What they do not remove are your nutrients such as your phosphorus and nitrogen. But how did we apply them? First of all, what are those nutrients, phosphorus and nitrogen? The fertilizer, right? Makes plants grow, algae blooms, seaweed growth, right? Again, the installation of aerobic units, the same way as a septic tank, put them in the ground, put a level on them, make sure they're set level. This is a multi-flow unit. This is a Norwegian singular unit larger, more the size of a concrete tank. Again, they have a pretreatment chamber. Here's your aerator here to, to oxidize and break down your disease-causing pathogens. Um, sludge return tank here, a filter system before the outlet. Now, where's the wastewater going in the outlet? What I'm gonna show you now are some practical approaches of dealing with these severe sites. This place on Canandaigua Lake had a rusted out steel septic tank right here that went into a small seepage pit right next to the embankment that goes down to the lake. When that system failed and we got in here, we told them, again, the repair was going to meet the current health department standards as best as possible. We were going to get it back further from the lake. It's supposed to be a minimum 100 feet away from the lake. Also, we didn't have the proper soils there. So we converted it uh, got rid of the old steel tank. We put a solids handling tank down in here, pumped up to an aerobic treatment unit, and put the leach system in here. And in order to put it in here, in this part of the embankment, back 100 feet from the lake, we had to put a cribbing area in there, cribbing apparatus in there, to hold the soil. Now, why did we put it up here? Because I've got this vegetation, trees, shrubs, whatever, downhill from it. We're going to get some nutrient removal. Am I going to get 100%? No. I'm practical enough to know I'm not going to get 100%, but we're going to get some nutrient removal. Another photo of the system going in. You can see what we had downhill here, this driveway, and then the lake is further on down. Move along here because I know we're running late. Here it is done, and it's been operating for a while. Here's a multi-flow aerobic treatment unit. 
Look at the growth of grass I've got on that bed we put in. I'm getting nutrient uptake. It's not going to the lake. Similar situation on this one. Rusted out steel septic tank underneath this deck caved in. This gentleman had one leach line in the driveway area here that was number one, it was less than 100 feet from the lake. Number two, it was below the 10 year flood elevation of the lake. Appendix 75A says, leach systems are unacceptable below the 10 year flood elevation. The 10 year flood elevation of Canandaigua Lake is 690. Now, Appendix 75A doesn't say, well, how far above the 10 year flood elevation are you supposed to be? So we adopted one foot. In other words, the bottom of any leach trench needs to be at elevation 691. Therefore, at least once every 10 years when we had a high water condition, the leach line is at least out of the lake water by one foot. So that's what we've adopted. Now, what does that require in many cases? Like the previous example I showed you. People are now gonna have to pump when they didn't have to pump before. Boy, does that create arguments. George, I don't need to pump. I'm grandfathered in because I've got gravity feed. Nothing causes the hair to stand up on the back of my neck more than to hear the, quote, grandfather phrase. <laughs> my answer to them is, we don't grandfather public health. So now that we have these stipulations that you gotta get the system up above the 10-year flood elevation, you will put a pump in. Here's the Norico Singular Aerobic Treatment Unit here. The pump tank is, they're still under construction, is going in over here. We had an existing retaining wall, timber retaining wall here. And working with the engineer and this embankment here, which was just full of brush and stuff anyway, we cleaned it out and we put the system in there and extended the, the cribbing area out here. Now there's the lake, you can see. Did I get this system back 100 feet from the lake? No, but I got it back as far as I could. Did we get the system up out of the lake water and above the 10 year flood elevation? Yes, we did. Got some grass vegetation between here and there. If it seeps out through the driveway, hopefully we're gonna get some nutrient uptake for this system. You can see more of the system going in, the same thing being installed. Here's more of it going in. Notice how this end of it is beveled, it's angled. Here's why. Put a 100 foot tape on this, go out this way, the neighbor's well. So we had to make sure what we were doing that we stayed away from the neighbor's well. So we beveled it this way to keep it away. And that did it. Here it is, almost completed. It's got a good growth of grass on it. I have not gotten back to get another photo of this, but it is working. Here's a situation which prior to DEC, this area got filled in and this place got built back in the 50s, 60s, who knows. They had a steel septic tank here, leach lines in the fill area. Steel septic tank rusted out, caved in. The guy said, well, we'll just set a new septic tank here and tie in. I said, uh-uh. You're in fill area here, you got the lake right here. Our policy is, Failed system, the repair is going to meet the current health department standards as best as possible. We could not get 100 feet away from the lake, so instead we put another aerobic treatment unit in and we pumped up into this cribbing area here. Now this guy had a little bit more money, he didn't like the pressure treated, he wanted to go in landscape blocks. Okay, fine, that works. You can see the system going in, it's dark, you can't quite see it. The aerobic unit sits here. There's the pump tank right there. That's gonna pump, force everything up. Here's the difference in people's tastes. He's putting this up with a landscape block in here. Neighbor put his, had to do the same thing a few years earlier. 
more rustic look. He wanted to use railroad ties. I wasn't crazy about the railroad ties with the treatment they have in them, but there it is. This is the property line going out to the lake. Neighbors got a long well. They took the chain link fence down here to allow the contractor in here to get this system in. Neighbors cooperated real well. There again, you can see the railroad ties here, the landscape block here. Almost completed. I wanted to show you this photo because I'm standing out on the dock looking back at it. At the time this system went in, the lake was low. You can see where the lake level is. But during periods of high uh, lake levels, heavy storms or whatever, when the lake does rise, you can see that the lake level quite often gets up here. Well, with his previous system in here, the leach lines were in the lake water. Now what we have done, we've gotten the system up out of the lake water. We got it back as far as we could. We're getting 98% removal of your disease-causing pathogens and bacteria with the aerobic unit. And I've got some vegetation here between that and the lake. I'm going to get some nutrient uptake. And there it is done, totally done. You notice these are at the surface. They need to be at the surface for uh, routine maintenance. The maintenance agreements we have for any of these enhanced treatment units requires twice a year inspections by the authorized manufacturer's rep. And they copy me on their inspection reports. Comes to my office. This is our control to make sure that these units are operating properly if we're going to put them in. This one was interesting because I got a call from this lady. She was complaining about her insulate toilet. That, that, if you ever read the directions on these things as to how they work, they're electronic. They burn your waste. If you ever read the instructions on these, you open up the lid, you put this little piece of paper in, you do your business, you close the lid, and the instructions say, step back and press down on the lever. It ignites it and burns it. She was complaining about it because of the, you know, if these things aren't vented properly, you get some very severe odors. She was complaining about the odors of it, and she says, George, isn't there some way we can get a better system here on the lake that doesn't give me the odors of this thing? I said, the odors are really bad. She says, yes. Yeah. She says, they have a striking resemblance to my husband's barbecuing. If you could have seen the look on his face when she told me that. <laughs> so I said, yeah, there is something we can do. Got her lined up with a design professional. We came up with this design. And oh, by the way, with the insulate toilet, they had a very improper kind of surface discharge of the gray water. That's bad too. So we got everything into this aerobic treatment unit. The soils weren't too bad in this spot. When we started testing the soils, we didn't have to bring fill material in or build a cribbing area. And up in this embankment, the soils weren't too bad. A little concerned about leaving the trees, but we snaked the leach lines in between these trees. Given that we were concerned about the root matter, we put an inspection port right here on the line. Came down here, ran some more lines in this area. But look at the grass growth. Again, I'm getting nutrient uptake. You can see the lake. Lake is way down over the embankment here. I'm getting nutrient uptake. The only thing I recommended to them here, they ought to bring a lawnmower down, keep the grass mowed. Once long grasses reach a certain height, they go dormant. They're not drawing up many nutrients anymore. If you mow a lawn area, it keeps growing, it keeps drawing up nutrients. So I recommended they get a lawnmower. He wasn't too crazy about that because he has to mow lawn at home. He wanted to be free from that at the lake, but uh, he did eventually bring a lawnmower down as he was mowing it. But the day I was here taking these photos, she was ecstatic, no more odors. She was very pleased with this system. She invited me to stay for dinner. She said her husband was about ready to start up the fire barbecue, and I said, no, thank you. I'll move on. Rusted out steel septic tank right on the lake. And this is, I don't know what you 
people here deal with what, uh, with the weekend warriors? Love these people. They build a guest house up here, put a half a John in there or a half bathroom, ran the pipe down, cut through the stop of the steel septic tank. The only bad part about this, it was right over the outlet baffle. A lot of good that was gonna do. But when we inspected the system, the tank was empty because it was rusted out, so it was leaching out. So we put a whole new system in again. Took that steel tank out. This is a white water aerobic unit going in. Again, the lids are at the surface for uh, maintenance reasons. Landscaping, you can landscape around them. This gentleman was so proud of his landscaping, he wanted to be in the picture, so hey, fine. But you can see that you can put them on a site, lake site, that can be aesthetically appealing. For the eccentrics out there who like to have their glass of wine around their wastewater treatment system during happy hour, <laughs> there's that application. <laughs> you laugh, these people are out there, let me tell you. <laughs> had a failed system, and I had a uh, Myers company claim that their microbial inoculator generator would revitalize a failed leach line. And this is a failed leach line here, over here was wet again. I was up away from the lake, so I said, all right, I'll let you try it. We couldn't get in here to put a, a replacement system in because the houses on this road are very tight together. So I let him try it here. This is the, the microbial nuclear generator unit that goes down inside an existing solid septic tank. Now, for these to work, number one, the tank's got to be the proper size. Number two, it has to be demonstrated that the system did work before it failed. In other words, if it was an improperly designed, improperly installed system like in clay soil, this isn't gonna make it work. It had to have been a system that did work for a number of years before it did fail. So these units go in the existing septic tank. There's the top of the septic tank right there. This collar goes on brings it to the surface for their routine maintenance. And this type of system, they come out and inspect it twice a year, and each time they throw a packet of bacteria in it that it works. And this is an aerator. It's almost like turning a septic tank into an aerobic treatment unit. There's another collar that goes on to bring everything to the surface. In time, when he put this system in, within two or three months' time, that wet area and that lawn area dried right up. It did revitalize the leach lines. Some of the technology can be applied out there. This bill, I did an inspection on this place for property deep transfer. I didn't even find a septic tank. Over in this area someplace was nothing but a cesspool above the lake. That's all it was. Got with an engineer to come up with a design system to fit I mean, Appendix 75A as best as possible. This is one of the first peat moss module systems that we put in. Peat moss module systems are pressure dose. You gotta pump to them anyway. So we put the, and again, I'm over a steep embankment. There's no way I could get a concrete tank in. Couldn't get it in. And I prefer concrete tanks to the polyethylene ones, but where we can't get them in, we, we do have some, this is a Fralo tank that was put in. Here's the pump tank, PVC pump tank. Again, we couldn't get a concrete one in, but we're up above groundwater, so it's not gonna float. We're way up on the embankment on the lake. Pumps over to three peat moss modules. And if you look at the design of the peat moss modules, it's usually one module per bedroom. So this is the installation of this system going in. There you are, you can see where this place is located. He had room up here off his parking area. And there it is done. Fits in this site nicely. And this system's working very well today. These peat moss modules, again, they're pressure dose. They force the wastewater up over the top of them and then it trickles down through. It's an Irish peat moss. 
that does your, your treatment of the wastewater. These photos were taken from Eric Murdoch's annual workshop in Skinny Atlas Lake. Great workshop, if any of you have a chance to go to it. It's a two-day workshop. The first day you're in a classroom like this, listening to the various vendors on their alternative systems. The second day you take a tour around Skinny Atlas Lake and the authorized manufacturer's reps are there to service any type of unit, whether it's these peat moss module units, there's an Avantex geotextile unit that you look at, some aerobic units out there, and so on. I would highly recommend you take that in if you're looking at utilizing any systems. And I threw this slide in there because you got the haves and the have-nots. The system up here next door, of course, you got the old standby outhouse. Now, can I do that everywhere? No. Can't put these types of systems in everywhere. I've got some lots right down on the lake. What do we do in that case? On a failed system, we put a holding tank in, period. Appendix 75A says, new construction, no holding tanks. And we adhere to that. Vacant lot, somebody wants to build something, that, George, I haven't got room, I'll just put a holding tank in. The answer is no. But if you've got an existing structure, somebody mentioned it here earlier, the older homes, what do they have? I think you mentioned it, Bob. What do they got out there? Nothing but a 500-gallon steel tank and maybe a 55-gallon barrel for leaching. This far from the lake in coarse fractured shale. I don't know what you have here on the shoreline of, of Chautauqua Lake. Ours is coarse fractured shale. You try to do a perk test in it, you can't get the, you can't pre-soak the hole because it goes right out through that coarse fractured shale. Are you getting any treatment in that coarse stuff? No, it's going right to the lake. So we do allow holding tanks as a retrofit repair. Once it's been demonstrated by a licensed design professional that no other system is going to work. The homeowner is required to have a high level alarm on it with the alarm set with one day's capacity left before they need the pumper and then they are to send me a copy of their pump out receipts. One method of trying to keep track of them to make sure that they are being pumped out when they need to be. There's that coarse fractured shale. That's what all there is out there around that lake. Now look how thick this slab is. It's a live load slab on this tank. Why? Because that's their parking spot. That's it. That's how small these lots are. We can't do anything else. Got some environmental people upset. Well, George, you should tell them to vacate the place and get out of there if they can't meet the current health department standards. Lakefront values on Canandaigua Lake running anywhere from between five, six, seven thousand dollars per lake foot frontage. You tell these people they got to vacate the premises. I'm going to end up in court under the dome building there in Canandaigua quite often. So we figured out that this was the best way to handle these failed systems. People ask me, George, how much is it going to cost me to pump out this holding tank? Well, number one, it depends on how much water you use. Number two, it depends on your capacity. The biggest expense of getting a septic tank pumper down there is a trip down, pump it out, the trip back to wherever he's got to take it to dispose of it. If you can minimize the trips down, you're going to minimize the cost. So in this case, we put two tanks, I think they were two 1250s, end to end, hooked them in series, put the high level alarm in the far end tank. Minimizes their pump out costs. Again, you can see the fractured shale that we're dealing with here. That you can't put any type of a system on it, you're gonna get any type of nutrient removal. Now, since this went in, some of these, uh, systems that Bob mentioned here just before me, maybe we could put these in today. That technology wasn't around when we were dealing with this type of situation. So this is why we went with the holding tanks. Now, because it's a holding tank, you're in it frequently. The pumper's there frequently to pump it out. A lot of people are putting these sanitary uh, sewer 
cast iron frame and covers on them right over the openings. Here it is, almost done. There's your cast iron frame and covers. Now, landscaping for these, this is New York State Route 21. This is why we put these in. This is New York State Route 21. This is the travel lane. This is the paved shoulder. They put this curb in, and we got, per believe it or not, I get, do get permits from the Department of Transportation to do this. They don't like it, but there's nothing else we can do. The right-of-way line for Route 21 goes right through these buildings. This is how close we are. Landscaping, they got some nice uh, wood chips in here. She put a flower pot on each cast iron frame and cover. <laughs> the pumper comes down, lifts the pot off, flips the lid open, pumps the tank out, puts the lid down, puts the pot back on, and that's the way it's taken care of. This works as far as keeping the nutrients and other problems, bacteria, out of the lake, which is a drinking water source. Now, we do require these holding tanks shall be equipped with an alarm, audible and visual, located in a conspicuous location to indicate when the pump out is necessary. Also, the wastewater must be pumped by a New York DEC permitted septic hauler. And you gotta hand it to these guys, they got a sense of humor, haven't they? <laughs> so, Quick summary, to de develop sites like this with on-site systems, first of all, develop ex effective economic alternative systems for difficult limited sites. We've got a lot of them out there now, aerobic units, microbial inoculator generators, uh, peat moss module systems now. There's an uh, Presby system now. Bob mentioned to you these other types of systems that are coming now, we're trying to get them into New York State Encourage strict compliance with your New York State Department of Health standards. The standards are there. You have the tools here to use. Keep the system back away from the shoreline as far as possible. If you know what your 10-year flood elevation is of Chautauqua Lake, make the system come up and get it out of that water so you're getting better treatment, hopefully better nutrient removal. Know your codes. Know your tools. Use them. Know your limitations, use available resources on severe sites. You notice some of those embankments. You take a look at the site. What can we do? How can we get a system up in this area to get it further away from the lake and with some vegetation downhill from it to get some nutrient removal? And in the long run, good systems benefit the homeowner, the community, public health, and the environment. And with that, if I have any time left, I'll take some questions, Bill, unless you want to wait till the